So Google is getting sued and they're releasing some details into how their search engine works. And I'm going to show you how you can use this information to get an advantage in SEO. And make sure you watch until the end because I share one technique that I use to ethically manipulate Google's algorithm. Let's start with pillar one of what Google says are the three pillars of ranking, which is body or what the document says about itself, or in other words, content. And that's why it's paramount that you create epic SEO content, but not for the reason that you think. First, Google can't measure quality of content. In 2016, Google stated that our ability to understand documents directly is minimal, but what it can do is use other signals to determine quality. More on this in a second. Now, keep in mind that Google's algorithms are much more sophisticated than in 2016. It now uses NLP to understand content much better than before, but it's still relying on backlinks and user signals to determine quality. And that's why you can rank mediocre pages by powering them with backlinks. But ranking stability only occurs when the user signals align with the backlinks. For example, if a page has many backlinks, it implies that it's a high quality page. But here's the deal. Backlinks are just phase one of the ranking process. Once you hit the first page, the real game begins and now you're up against what I call the invisible force. And the invisible force is really just user engagement. And user engagement occurs at two different stages. First, Google uses click data in the search results. And this is actually pillar number three of ranking according to Google, which are user interactions. To keep it simple, if users are clicking on your result, it implies that it satisfies the intent of the keyword and vice versa. And once a user lands on your page, you've now entered level three of the game. And in level three, Google will track how a user engages with your page. And no one knows for sure the exact variables, but based on Google's court case, user interactions include clicks, attention on a result, scrolls, or mouse hovers to name only a few. And it's also possible that Google uses Chrome data to improve organic search results. I've always said that this is a conspiracy theory that I personally believe is true. And in Google's own words, Chrome exists to serve Google search. And the good news is that you don't need to guess. Simply install a tool like Mouseflow and you can see how users are engaging with your SEO content in real time. Now, based on my experience, there are a few elements that negatively affect UX. The first is poor loading speed. And it doesn't matter how good your content is if the page loads slowly. And I won't bore you with the countless studies that have proven this. So instead, throw your page into Google PageSpeed Insights and benchmark your score. And if it's below an 80, then you should make it a priority to improve your speed. The simplest fix is to optimize your images. Here's a simple three-step process I use with every single page I'm trying to rank. Number one, always size the image to the size it'll appear on your website. For example, images appear at 700 pixels width on my blog post. So I resize every image to a width of 700 pixels before it gets uploaded. Number two, compress the image. So there are WordPress plugins that can handle this, but you can use a tool like Optimizilla. And lastly, number three, convert your image to WebP format, which is the fastest loading file type. And then the next UX killer is any element that stops the user from achieving their goal. It's simple, a user came to your page because they were looking for a solution to whatever problem that they have. So if you have tons of ads, pop-ups, or distracting design, it'll disrupt user experience. So the solution is simple, prioritize experience over monetization and ask yourself what is best for the user. And once you've tackled these foundational UX elements, it's time to focus on the content itself. So I create SEO content that ranks based on a simple criteria. Is this content different and 10X better than what already exists? And it's a simple question with big implications, but the truth is it's impossible to objectively measure the quality of your content. Instead, you need to let the market decide what's good or bad. For example, when you like this video and subscribe to my channel, you're telling YouTube's algorithm that you want more SEO content from me. As a result, YouTube will show this video to more people just like you. And Google is using similar data to determine whether your page should be showed to more searchers. And if you haven't already, please subscribe now because I've been told that there's a direct correlation between people who subscribe to my channel and better Google rankings. So the first stage to creating content that users and Google love is to study the top three most stable ranking results. This is critical. Don't look at who is ranking right now. Look at who is ranked through many algorithmic cycles 
because they're doing something right. So go to Ahrefs Keyword Explorer, enter your keyword, and scroll down to position history. Export the last two years of data and open ChatGPT, select Advanced Data Analysis, and use the following prompt. So now that we know the best performing URLs, it's time to analyze these results based on strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, or better known as SWOT. Go to the best performing URL, and what I like to do is save the page as a PDF, then go back to ChatGPT and upload the PDF. And you can use a prompt like so. And then ChatGPT will partially analyze the content and give you some solid recommendations for beating your competitor. Now with that said, I would not rely on this for developing your complete SEO content strategy. Instead, I recommend manually examining the competitors. My criteria is simple. What can I take from what they're doing well and do it better? And what aren't they doing that allows me to bring something new and unique to the table. So let's look at WebFX for example. According to Ahrefs, WebFX has a DR of 88, which means they can produce an average content asset and still outperform 80% of competitors. And this is actually pillar two of ranking according to Google, which is what they call anchors or what the web say about the document, or in other words, backlinks. So let's take a look at their page. First, always focus above the fold because 80% of users don't read past the headline according to most studies and use CoSchedule's headline tool to get a quick look into the headline quality. Then look at the general layout of the page. So WebFX has a great design and user interface, but their content is pushed below the fold, which could disrupt experience. Overall, the content is sufficient for ranking purposes, but it definitely isn't exceptional. One thing that stands out is how aggressive the calls to action are. All informational content from an SEO perspective should be structured for the prime primary objective, which is to educate and inform. And once you've fulfilled that promise, it makes sense to hit the user with an offer to extend the relationship further. And the other big thing that stands out is a lack of supporting visual content. Many people skim content before committing to reading it. So unique visual media can stop them in their tracks and increase engagement on your page. So based on this, you'll see how I structured my SEO content to compete with WebFX. Notice that my content is pushed up above the fold has unique visual content and it isn't a pitch fest. Here's the big takeaway. Create content that's original and unique compared to what's ranking while continuing to satisfy the intent. But most important, create exceptional content because it produces positive user signals and websites are more likely to link to it. Stop creating content for Google and start creating content for people because people determine what's good or bad. Google is simply reacting based on that data. Now, keep in mind though, even great SEO content needs to be optimized for the basics. That means you need to have your primary keyword phrase in the URL, title, meta description, H1, and first sentence at a bare minimum. And if you want to take your on-page SEO to the next level, then use Surfer to find NLP keywords, but not for simply injecting these keywords into your content. Instead, use the NLP keywords to find gaps in your content, then create new sections within the content to narrow these gaps. And then once you're ranking, you'll need to study how users are engaging with your page. With Mouseflow or any tracking tool, you can get critical intel that can aid your SEO performance. For example, in the last 30 days, I have 67 user recordings for my SEO for Roofers page. I can study these recordings, find commonalities, and then make adjustments to the page to improve experience. And you can also use heat map technology to see clicks, movement, and scroll behavior to improve experience even more. So now that you're obsessed with content quality and user experience, I recommend testing titles and meta descriptions descriptions to drive more organic CTR. Now the key to great SEO titles is to use the purple cow technique, which I took from Seth Godin. It's simple. If you want better CTR, you need to stand out. So examine the top ranking result and make sure yours is that purple cow among that top 10. And you can use ChatGPT to help you brainstorm, but in general, numbers and power words make a big difference. Then just run an A-B test using seotesting.com and all you have to do is keep trying to beat the original title tag. And finally, here Here's how I ethically manipulate Google's algorithm based on everything you've learned today. So I'm gonna get a little meta with you here for a second, but think about what I just did in this video. I shared a specific example for the keyword SEO for roofers. Now, why do you think I did that? Well, first, to prove that I know what I'm doing, but it's also because by talking about it, I know some people will go to Google, study the page, and attempt to reverse engineer it. And guess what that does? It creates positive, real user signals on my page that I'm trying to rank. So if this video is been helpful, please hook me up with a real user signal by liking it and please subscribe for more videos.